Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion China. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. On my previous video, I actually have discussed how to design multi-stage transformer using binomial transformer. So basically for this video, I'm going to emphasize on the theory aspect. What are the formulas that are required to design multi-stage transformer using another method, which is the Chapishield method. So this will be the objective of this video. Okay, firstly, okay, I'm going to use two different techniques to design the multi-stage transformer. First, okay, earlier on, I actually have covered this binomial. Okay, so this video, I will emphasize on the theory that are required to design this Chapishield transformer in order to do this impedance matching. On the next video, I will have an example how to design multi-stage transformer using Chapishield transformer. So this will be the objective of this series of discussion on multi-stage transformer. This will be the part 14 series discussion on impedance matching. So guys, if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Or if not, I actually strongly encourage you guys to ask your question through the comment. Okay, this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, please ask me through the comment. You can also give me some suggestion. Okay, what are the topics that you guys are keen? Okay, and also, how to improve the quality of this channel. Before I continue, okay, I urge you guys to help me by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, let's quickly understand the key difference between Chappie Shield and also binomial multi-session transformer. Okay, in contrast to the binomial transformer, okay, this multi-session design by using Chapishield matching transformer, they actually optimize the bandwidth, which means that this method, Chapishield, the key idea is how to control the bandwidth. Okay, however, okay, because you have actually more bandwidth, basically the suffer side will be on the ripper on the pass band. So basically, in short, for Chapishield, okay, you can actually has a larger bandwidth but you need to tolerate some ripper at the pass band. As for binomial, okay, you hardly have any ripper at the pass band. But however, you actually have a very narrow bandwidth. So basically, this is so-called the trade-off between the two methods, binomial and chapishio. Okay, it also mentioned in these sentences here, okay, sacrifice the flatness of the pass band response. Okay, they actually result in a bandwidth that is significant better than those of the binomial transformer for a given number of sessions. So basically, in short, when we actually compare to the same number of sessions, the Chapishio actually has a larger bandwidth. However, you need to tolerate some ripper at the pass band. Okay, let's move on. The Chapishio frequency response, okay, as I mentioned, that it is actually not flat. As you can see from this diagram here, so this is actually the frequency response of Chapishio. You can see that at the pass band, you actually has the ripper. So basically, this is what it means. It actually is not flat. Okay, so basically, it actually exhibits a ripper in its pass band. Okay, however, please note that the magnitude of this ripper never exceeds some maximum value. Okay, so basically, this is the maximum reflection coefficient. So basically, you can see that this red line here defines the maximum reflection coefficient. And you can see that the level of the ripper never exceed this maximum reflection coefficient. Okay, so basically, in short, you can control the ripper okay, with, without exceeding this maximum reflection coefficient. And hence, you actually can achieve higher bandwidth, okay, which I'm going to further explain later on. You can see that this is by Chebyshev. This is by the binomial. You can see that for binomial, okay, the pass band is actually quite flat. But for Chapishio, you can see that there will be ripper at the pass band. 
Okay, so basically this will be the trade-off between binomial and trapezoid. Okay, basically you can see if you compare the same number of sections, okay, basically trapezoid will have a larger bandwidth as compared to the method of using binomial. Okay, next. Okay, so basically I want to do a quick emphasis, for example, on the bandwidth. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, the bandwidth is actually defined by FM. Okay, so basically you can imagine that you draw, this is your maximum, okay, so-called reflection coefficient. And this will be your bandwidth. From this diagram here, you can see that N equals to 1. Okay, so basically this will be the bandwidth. When N equals to 4, okay, so basically you can see that this will be the bandwidth. I think that it is quite clear that when the number of sessions actually increase, the bandwidth also increase. It will be the same for trapezoid and also binomial. Okay, however, okay, for this particular case, I like to highlight if you can tolerate a higher ripple, okay, again, you can imagine that the bandwidth will be even larger. Okay, so if you are able to tolerate certain amount of ripple and you can tolerate a higher level of maximum reflection coefficient, you just imagine this. Okay, so basically, you will actually have a larger bandwidth. So basically, this is what it mean here. Okay, the bandwidth defined by FM actually increase as the number of session N is increased. Okay, so you can see from the diagram as I have highlighted earlier on, this will be the bandwidth for N equals to 1. This will be the bandwidth for N equals to 4. Okay, it's quite obvious that N equals to 4 has a significant larger bandwidth as compared to N equals to 1. Okay, the refraction coefficient is not necessarily zero at the design frequency. Okay, so basically this will be the design frequency or maybe the center frequency. It, it may not be always zero. Okay, so basically this point will be equal to zero. So basically it will be zero for odd value n. Okay, so basically for odd value n, okay, it will be at the zero. Okay, and when this uh, so-called it will be the maximum refraction coefficient okay, value for even value n. Okay, for even value, for example, this n equals to 2, you can see here, okay, basically you will have the maximum value. So when n is equals to 2, 4, 6, okay, you actually have the center of frequency actually equals to this value, which is the maximum refraction coefficient. When n equals to odd, okay, for example, when it's equal to 1, you can see that it will be at this point, which will be equal to 0. So in short, for the odd value, okay, 1, 3, 5, etc., okay, the center of frequency will be at 0. So basically, this will be some of the key design for Chapisium multi-session transformer. Okay, one key characteristic of Chapisium transformer is they are symmetric. Okay, so basically, they are symmetric. Okay, so basically this is the rule here. So basically the, the very left and very right, they are actually equal and then after that follow. Okay, but let me give you an example. For example, when n equals to three, you can see that there'll be one session, second session and three session. So basically for this design, you actually have three multi-session transformer or three quarter wavelength okay, multi-session transformer. So basically you can see that you actually firstly can draw the symmetric line okay so basically this metric line will be right at the middle of the second session as you can see here so you basically split them into two and then from here you can conclude that this reflection coefficient one is equal to reflection coefficient two which is illustrated here and refract reflection coefficient zero and reflection coefficient three they are equal so basically this is the rule of trebuchet multi-session they will actually have this symmetric and once you have this symmetric you actually can draw the symmetric line and then there after you can actually link up the similarity between the reflection coefficient. For this case, I give you a simple example when n equals to 3, okay, reflection 1 and reflection 2, they will be equal. Reflection 0 and reflection 3, they will be equal. Okay, if not, you can always fall back on this equation to understand better. So basically, this is the first criteria, remember, for Chebyshev they will have some symmetric lines, so-called, uh, they will have some symmetric lines. Let's continue. Okay, on the second part here. Okay, so basically these are all the formulas that are required to design this multi-session trapezoid. Okay, so basically I will do these two formula on the next slides. Okay, after that I will come to the rest of the slide. I will explain on these two formula. In short, in order to design this multi-session uh, Chapisheel transformer, okay, you need to have all this formula. Okay, I will explain how to use this formula on the next video. 
But over here, let me give you some key idea how to use all this formula. As I illustrate, I'm going to explain the first two equations. Okay, in general, you can see that they are actually equal. And basically, when I actually do this equation and put them together, okay, I will be able to find, for example, the reflection coefficient zero, reflection coefficient one, and etc. I will show it to you how on the next slides. Okay, so before I continue, I like to urge you guys to help me by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me by like this video. Again, if you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe to this video. And last but not least, please remember to turn on your notification bell so that you can receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much. Okay, let's continue the discussion on the first two formula which I have illustrated earlier on. Okay, so basically this will be the first set of formula, okay, which is over here. So this will be the first set of formula. Okay, let's understand what does this first set of formula actually will be. Or uh, I will say that the key emphasis will be on the last stage here. Okay, you can see that the last stage, all the formula is written here. Okay, this front part portion is quite clear cut. So if let's say n equals to three, this will be equals to three. If this is five, this n will be equals to five, and etc. So this part I will not discuss. But let me discuss on the so-called the second portion here. So basically, it can be when n equals to 1, what you need to do is you just copy this equation. When n equals to 2, you just copy this self equation and replace by this guy here. And when n equals to 3, okay, you can just copy this equation and then replace this over here. So in short, okay, whatever the value of n, you actually can fall back in this general equation here. Okay, so if not, if you are worried, I, I actually have this table to let you understand also. So this will be T1, T2, T3, T4, etc. You should be able to derive this so-called sets of equation. So basically, all this T1x will be replacing this portion here. As I highlight, the first portion will be quite clear cut. Okay, so next, let's move on, on to this second equation. Remember, okay, how can we actually do the second equation here? Okay, so basically, Instead of doing the second equation, which is over here, let me show you an example here. Okay, so let's say if n equals to 3, okay, as I told you earlier on, if n equals to 3, okay, so this n will be equal to 3. So this is how I get the first portion here, if you still remember. So this n will be equal to 3, and everything still the same. Okay, I hope you still remember. So remember, I told you that I need to copy the T3 formula here. So how to get back the T3 formula, which is over here. Okay, so this step to this step is uh, all mathematics. You will be making use a lot of these rules here. But from this step to this step is a lot of mathematics. Okay, you definitely can derive this formula to reach this step here. So for T3, I just copy this set of formulas okay, on to the, these steps here, T3 here. So basically, this is the set of formula which I have shown you to you okay, earlier on. So what I need to do is basically this first part here will be AE minus j3 theta here, and this will be this part, which is the t3, this portion here. So I just put it here. Okay, so basically, I just open up the bracket, as you can see from here. So basically, this will be from the first set of formula here. Okay, for this second equation, which I have illustrated, okay, so again, this will be n equals to 3. Okay, so when this is n equals to 3, you can imagine that this will be 3. Okay, and then this so-called reflection coefficient 0 cosine 3 theta here. So this will be T1 cosine, this will be equal to 3, 3 minus 2 equals to 1, which is over here. So once I have this theta, okay, that's it, I will stop at this point here. So basically, this will be from the second equation, I have another general form of equation. So next, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to compare coefficient with these two equation. Okay, I'm going to compare these two equation, compare their so-called coefficient. Okay, let me show it to you how can we actually do this. Okay, so basically, first step, okay, I'm going to compare the coefficient okay, based on this cosine 3 theta. Okay, so basically, this is the first equation. Okay, so basically, this equation is actually from here. So this is the first equation, which I derive and I put it over on the next slide here. Okay, so this will be the second equation, okay, which I derive over here. So this will be my second equation. Okay, so I have shown you this first equation. This is the second equation. Same over here. This will be my first equation. This will be my second equation. Okay, so firstly, I just want to compare 
three theta here. So basically with this three theta, you can see that this will be the sets of formula that I'm going to compare, right? So basically these are the set of formula that have this cosine three theta here. So from here, okay, I can actually conclude that. Okay, so what I need to do is I strap up all the common term. Okay, I strap up all the common term. And what I left will be A, okay, set three, okay, theta M, which is here. And what is common term will be two theta naught here. So from here, I actually can compute what will be my theta naught. Okay, simply just move this two over. So will be A over two, okay, uh, set three theta M here, as you can see from here. Okay, so basically this is a simple how to make use of the first and second equation, compare the coefficient. Then from here, I will be able to find the refraction coefficient theta zero from here. Okay, so next, okay, okay be, next on the second term, I compare again the cosine theta. Uh, again, you can see that compile this cosine theta will be this two set, okay, followed by this set of formula. Okay, so I have highlight in this box here. Okay, again, the key thing is I take up all the common term. Okay, so I take out all the common term. Okay, as you can see from here, I take out all the common term. So what left will be 3a. You can see from here 3a. Set 3 theta m, as you can see from here. And then what will be common term uh, over the other side will be uh, minus 3a. Okay, minus 3a. Set theta m here, correct? And then over here, Okay, basically will be just two theta one. Okay, so basically this will be the formula. And again, if you want to find theta one, you just need to do a divide by two. Okay, and you will be also able to compare the coefficient of the first equation and second equation. Okay, so remember this. Okay, I'm going to discuss this a little bit in depth on my next video. But over here, you can see that how I actually can calculate my theta zero and theta one. Okay, remember theta zero is equal to theta three. And theta 1, okay, theta is a refraction coefficient, is equals to the theta 2. So basically from here, okay, when I actually calculate the refraction coefficient 0 and refraction coefficient 1, I have also managed to be able to find my refraction coefficient 2 and refraction coefficient 3. Okay, so basically this is just to compare the first two equations here, which I have highlighted to you early on. Okay, on to, on to this first two equation here, I basically do the comparison. You can see from here, I will be able to find my refraction coefficient zero, refraction coefficient one. And because one and two is the same, so basically I will be also find my refraction coefficient two and also refraction coefficient three. Okay, so basically early on, I have do a comparison between the first equation and the second equation. Okay, let me continue on the third equation, how to understand on the third equation here and what I need to do in order to understand the third equation. Okay, let me show it to you. Okay, so basically this is the third equation. So in short here, this A term will be equals to the maximum refraction coefficient. A equals to the maximum refraction coefficient. However, one thing that is not clear will be the plus or minus. Whether is it a plus or whether is it a minus actually depend on this formula. So when this formula is plus, that means that it will be A equals to maximum refraction coefficient plus maximum refraction coefficient. And this formula, if let's say it's a minus, A will be equal to minus maximum refraction coefficient. Okay, I hope this is clear. So basically this will allow us to find the A term. This A term will be sub into here. Remember, we will have still one unknown, which is the A term. So basically once we know this, we can actually sub into this equation here. Okay, this equation okay, is basically allow us to find this term here. Okay, so if you still remember, Okay, on the equation, on the final equation, for example, okay, I need to find this set 3 theta m, for example, here. And from this equation here, I should be able to find the value. And then this equation here, basically, I have managed to calculate the refraction coefficient. I hope you still remember. Okay, by finding the refraction coefficient, okay, it's not the impedance. Okay, I need to design multi-session impedance transformer. So basically from this equation, I basically will transform all the refraction coefficient into so-called impedance. Then I will be able to successfully design this Chebyshev multi-session transformer. And the last equation is simply to find the bandwidth. In short over here, these are the formulas that are required to design a Chebyshev multi-session multi transformer. 
Okay, which I will use another example to illustrate how to design this Trapezoidal multi-section transformer. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.